Hello everyone, I'm excited to share with you the spring roadmap for Semantic Kernel. Over the next few months, we have three different areas that we plan on investing in for Semantic Kernel. Those are V1 parity across all of our different SDKs, better connector support that's both across our AI connectors and memory connectors. And last but not least, first class agent support. We already have an experimental agent package that you haven't tried out, I highly recommend but we're going to make it non-experimental so you can start using it in your production workloads. Hold on to your seat. I hope you're excited for what we're going to be shipping as part of spring 2024. If you've been following the journey that Semantic Kernel has been on, you're probably already aware that our .NET SDK is already at version 1.0. In fact, as of recording, we're now at 1.3. And what that means is for all of the pieces that are non-experimental, you can take a dependency on it knowing that it won't change. It won't break you at any point in the future. The same thing is going to be coming to our two other kernels that we support, Python and Java. And what I'm excited about getting both of these other SDKs to parity is that we imagine a uh, harmonious way of both AI teams and app development teams working together using Semantic Kernel. As part of V1, we introduced uh, YAML as a way to describe prompts and agents. And we introduced the handlebars template as a cross-language way to templatize your prompts. Once all of the SDKs are at V1, what you'll be able to do is have your AI teams build prompts, build agents using YAML, using handlebars. And instead of having to rewrite it, when you turn it into a production application, you'll be able to share those exact same resources with your app devs. In addition to bringing the YAML format and various templating languages to the Python and Java libraries, we also want to bring in the other goodness that was brought in with v.1 of the .NET SDK. Now I could go on and on about what those improvements are and, and how much I love them, uh, but at the a high level, most of those improvements were part of bringing the kernel and making it the core part of any AI feature inside of your application. As part of this architecture, it means that all of the services, the prompts, the, the translation layer between your application and your AI models is now centralized into a single class or object. We think this is ultimately a better architecture than other approaches like chains or flows, because what this means is that you have a single place for you to add observability to your application so that you can practice responsible AI and add things like telemetry and hooks to your application. Now you're probably wondering when <laughs> is all of this goodness going to be coming to Python and Java? And the answer is soon. The plan is to have betas or release candidates of both those languages by the end of this month or early March and have complete parity by Microsoft Build. If you are interested in keeping track of our progress and seeing what is left on our road to be 1.0, I'd highly recommend checking out the blogs that we're writing about our journey. And you can always take a look at our public backlogs to see what is coming next as part of our roadmap. The second area of our investments are all about connectors. Over the last several months, every single person that you can imagine or company that you can imagine has created a new model, right? You have Google with Gemini, you obviously have Llama, from Facebook, and even Microsoft has created the Phi2 model. As part of our work in Semantic Kernel, we wanted to make it incredibly easy for you to mix and match or switch between different models so that you can use the best model for each job. Now, in addition to supporting the models, we also want to support all the various deployment models, whether that's on Hugging Face, uh, Azure AI, or even local models. So keep an eye for all of the different deployment support stories that we want to provide. We also have gotten really great feedback on our memory story and our memory abstractions. They're still experimental today because uh, we wanted to collect that feedback. We wanted to make them better. We already have some ideas of how to improve them. And so as part of our road to Microsoft build, we want to ship an improved abstraction 
over our memory connectors so that they're even easier to use. And then lastly, we know that this year is going to be filled with all sorts of multimodal experiences, or we like to call them corded experiences, where you want to mix in not just text, but video, images, audio, documents into a single prompt so that AI can reason over all of these different items and likewise produce text, images, video, audio, whatever it might be, so that you can have the full range of sensory experiences that you would expect from an AI application. Building out all of these different connectors, whether AI or memory, takes a village. And so if you're interested in contributing back to Semantic Kernel, hit us up. We have a brand new process that's going to streamline the adoption and integration of new connectors inside of Semantic Kernel. We will help you create a new feature branch in the main Semantic Kernel repo, and we'll work with you to create small bite-sized uh, PRs that we can review and ingest inside of Semantic Kernel. So again, if you're excited about Semantic Kernel and want to contribute back, help us with our connector vision, our connector story. We have the full list of prioritized uh, models and deployments that we want to support. Take a look at them, see if any of them interest you, and reach out to us on the Semantic Kernel team so that you can help build them out for the rest of the community. The last thing I'm super excited about investing in are agents. We already have an experimental package for agents built on top of the OpenAI Assistance APIs that you can go ahead and play around with. If you haven't already tried it out, I highly, highly recommend it. One of the best samples, kind of notebooks, actually shows how it works end to end. Is something that John Maida produced, and I'll, I'll link it in the video description. If you use it, you can already do some of the advanced capabilities that have been popularized by SDKs like Autogen, where you actually have multiple agents collaborating, working together to solve a user's needs. It's really, really powerful stuff. And it points to a vision where, as part of building an AI application, you build these teams of AIs of different skill sets, of different domains that can work together, kind of like a diverse set of humans would, right? Uh, we have different disciplines like PM, designer, uh, coders. The same patterns I expect to happen in the agent space as well. Now, our current agent abstraction is very, very tied to the existing assistance API. And as part of the work that we want to do to make it non-experimental is we want to improve the abstractions so that you could build an agent with any model or any API whether that's Gemini or Llama or any of the other connectors and models that I mentioned in the previous section. We're really excited with what people potentially build with agents. So please share as you build out, as you do your tests, so we can make sure those same features are supported as part of the final abstraction that we land on. I hope all of that got you excited about what's coming next for Semantic Kernel as part of our spring roadmap and also kind of gave you an idea of what you could possibly build on top of Semantic Kernel as we start rolling out these features to all of you in the community. Semantic Kernel is an open source project, so it wouldn't be where it is today. It wouldn't be as successful as it is without all of your support. That of course includes things like PRs, but also just creating issues on us so we know what's wrong and what we can fix and what to make better. And of course, all of the evangelism that you as a community do every single day. So once again, thank you personally and from the Semantic Kernel team. I can't wait to see what all of you build on top of Semantic Kernel as we continue to make it even better.